Okay, greetings everybody and welcome to the uh, MS Dynamics World Document Management webcast series. I am Jason Gumpert from msdynamicsworld.com and I'm really happy to have you all here with us today. We are fortunate to be joined by uh, Richard Lash, Business uh, Process Improvement and Change Management Practice Partner at R3D2 Consulting. Richard has many years of experience in uh, business process improvement methodology and tools uh, for companies and service providers who need to optimize their document production and delivery functions. He is also a frequent presenter at industry events on document management and BPI. He's uh, here with us today to present the session, Know the Score, How Improving Document Management Boosts Procurement Operations. And uh, we are really glad to have him with us. I think this will be a great event for you. We will leave time at the end for questions, and you can enter your questions anytime. You should see a Q&A block off to uh, the right side of, of the uh, screen. And we will get to as many as we can with Richard at, at, the end of the, at, the, at the end of the presentation. You can also tweet your comments and your questions. We're trying to use the hashtag MSDWDocManagement. That's MSDWDOCMGMT. Um, so feel free to try that out as well. And without further delay, I would like to welcome Richard Lash. Thank you very much, Jason. And uh, thank you all. Good morning, everybody. And thank you all for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate this opportunity to um, work with Jason and Microsoft Dynamics World uh, to give a little bit of our position on uh, the document management and procurement operations. Um, I'm used to presenting in person or working with groups face to face, so we want to try and have as uh, interactive a session as is possible. So we are going to, as Jason said, allow questions as we go. Um, you can use the chat box to enter a question, and I will try to respond to as many of those as possible during the question. So the other thing we're going to do here as we kick off is we're going to queue up a uh, polling question here that will allow us to have a little better idea of where um, where the audience has come from, what your experience is, et cetera. Again, as I'm uh, used to trying to uh, do face-to-face -face presentations, this will help me as well. Uh, just going to give you a little bit of background on our 3 d 2 We are a consulting organization that focuses on helping business improve their performance by using business process improvement methodologies and tools. Um, we work in a range of industries, but especially focused on highly regulated document intensive industries such as insurance, financial institutions, and healthcare. So that's uh, just a two second background on us. Um, in order to get started this morning, I thought I would do a little bit of an introduction. And you know, I think that every business process is affected um, by uh, their focus. The focus for business process historically has been heavily on uh, production productivity. But companies today are searching more and more for cost reduction opportunities and improvements to gain new business. And in doing so, they've turned and started to use business process also for uh, more administrative type tasks. Procurement is at the core, in our opinion, of every product or service a business offers because without effective procurement, schedules are impacted, costs cannot be maintained or reduced, and quality cannot be achieved. The other thing is that procurement is much more than just placing an order. It does span many functions and many uh, involves complex interactions. So um, not sure what we've got in terms of results on the poll questions. Jason, do we have any results yet? Um, I, I, are you not seeing the results yet on the right side there? Um, I might have I to come back. Uh, I can, uh, I'm not sure why they're not, uh, here we go. Are they showing up now? Okay. Sorry about that. So the majority of the folks uh, 
that did respond, 32% of you that responded um, actually, of the attendees, actually said you have had some business process improvement uh, experience, and most of you are in one of the other functions, a couple finance people and uh, a few uh, purchasing, but mostly other areas. So uh, I will try to keep that in mind as we go forward. So um, with that in mind, I'd like to move on to um, looking at some definitions. There's three main themes that I'm going to go through in this session, procurement, documents, and business process improvement. And to assure that we're all on the same page, at least for the next 45 minutes, um, I would like you to accept these definitions. Uh, the first definition on procurement really defines the scope of procurement um, as we're talking about it today as a business process. And this process usually involves up to 10 different steps, the purchase planning, standards determination, specification development, supplier research and selection, um, the value analysis on the suppliers, financing, price negotiation, making the purchase, contract administration, inventory control, and disposal. So it's, it's far more complex than just placing an order. Um, from a document point of view, a procurement document specifically is one of those things that seems to be mundane and type of item that in reality serves as an essential element to organizing and presenting inputs and outputs that take place in the procurement process. For procurement, some of the different categories of documents are user-related documents, which include specifications, utilization, um, seller documents would include proposals, pricing, et cetera, and the business slash legal and documents would in, include contracts, terms and conditions, purchase orders, et cetera. The bottom line on the document is the document is a communication vehicle um, that does serve as a permanent record. Moving on to business process improvement, many of you that did respond have had experience with business process improvement, and therefore, um, I think it's uh, this is a very simple um, definition, but really what it does is the focus originally um, uh, that was on business process improvement was more on production environment. And it was only more recently that the activities of business process improvement, the methodologies for quality and workflow improvement have gained acceptance and momentum in the more administrative uh, processes, such as customer service, finance, and procurement. I want to just tell you a little story that I read in doing some research for this. It goes back many years now, but um, an example of how this has been applied in a more administrative area is progressive insurance. And many years ago, they looked at their claims process when they were a pretty small organization. And they felt that the process was leading to uh, a lot of cost and customer dissatisfaction. You had a call that set up the claim. Then you had to set up an appointment with an adjuster to come out and inspect the automobile, and then that adjuster had to go through and file a report, and that report then went into the claims department, which would review the report and the claim, and then they would approve the payment of the claim. Then it would go to finance, who would issue the check and mail the check out, and eventually the customer or the repair organization would receive that check. What Progressive did was they assigned their customer service people uh, on the phone to um, taking the phone calls from their insurees and immediately dispatching or setting immediately an appointment with an adjuster. The adjusters were placed in those wonderful little white progressive vans that we see on the ads, and they were not 
based in an office someplace, but they were based roaming around um, in the van. What happened oftentimes is the adjuster could even meet the people at the scene of the accident, provide the claim. They then went or provide the information to the adjustment. They went even further in authorizing the adjuster to actually issue a check on the spot. And the result is they had a huge jump in their customer satisfaction. Their costs went down in terms of the number of people that they had working on a claim. And the story is that the end of the story is that now Progressive is the third or fourth largest automobile insurer in the United States. So that's kind of an example of how business process improvement has been applied to the more administrative type area. So the, the title of this session is Knowing the Score. And um, I came up with that looking back at the fact that Today, almost everybody looks at and measures performance by results. And each of these items that are on the list that you're looking at today is a result metrics. I'm not sure that you're familiar with all of them, but most of them are the traditional results, the results that you would see. The one different one here may be the two on managed spend as a total of as a percent of total spend, and what managed spend really is is how much of the organization spend is under the control of the procurement process or the procurement department. And that's really a reflection as a key performance indicator of the confidence and trust that the executives place in the process. Um, the cost savings of the percent of managed spend then is really what contribution to the overall organizational cost savings the procurement department is working on. But the, the, the thing that I want to emphasize here is that this list of key performance indicators or items as a scorecard is understandable, but it really is a uh, definition of the results historically. This is kind of what's happened as a result of the efforts. So it doesn't mean that these aren't important results to do, but what I want to turn to is the fact that if we want to change or improve performance, what we need to do is look at the driver metrics. We need to look at those things that are underlying the um, process and really show when you've made a change or can be indicators during the process. So I'd like to just spend a minute or so here going through a couple of these um, because driver, driver metrics are the measures of the factors which result in the final results. Um, a change in drivers will impact the the score or the final results. The supplier defect rate has an immediate impact on cost. And as a key performance indicator, um, it measures the quality of the purchase effort uh, resulting from the procurement department. And I would like to just throw out a question for you to think about here. How many organizations have a structured process that connects the quality of the goods or services that you're receiving as part of the purchasing effort back to the end users and what the impact is. Um, the, the ability to measure and collect feedback on the, the defect rate, provide it back to procurement, and then use it to manage your vendors is often lacking in the organizations that we deal with. Similarly, the supplier on-time delivery percent um, has a huge impact in the organization. And because if we um, are not getting the, in the products or services when it's needed, um, then we have many delays in 
terms of the effort. The procurement cycle time um, is more of an internal measurement for the procurement process. And that cycle time measurement really talks to how quickly can procurement react to the changing needs for an organization. In addition to the cost, which clearly uh, is, a, is a result of this, there is also the impact on the, the acceptability of procurement uh, to manage more investments. Um, what I mean by that is that if procurement is not able to respond quickly to changes in results, frequently what you'll have is folks going outside of the procurement cycle with the excuse that, well, purchasing procurement wasn't able to give me what I needed in time for the next delivery or in time to meet my deadline, so therefore I had to go and buy it on my own. The next uh, point here, first pass yield for procurement, is really what I mean by that is when you start a purchasing effort, how much of that effort goes through the first time without any rework or without any uh, interruptions. Uh, an example here might be we were working with a client uh, on a major RFP and for an insurance organization. And almost at every step of the RFP process, they had to stop, go back, clarify the answers that they received from the vendors because the vendor assumptions were different than what the uh, company assumptions were, so they had to go back and reset that. Then the vendor promises in the RFP or what the vendor thought they were going to deliver had to be recalculated to match what the company was expecting. So uh, each one of those steps extended the process till it ran out uh, over instead of a, a couple months uh, into several months, almost a year. Uh, again, the internal customer satisfaction, I won't spend a lot of time on that. That's really how acceptable performance is uh, to the rest of the organization of the procurement. Uh, the value of supplier new ideas, this is, this is an interesting one in my mind. And what it really does is it measures how well the procurement process is leveraging the knowledge that exists in the supplier network. Today, we're all suffering from or enduring having reduced resources in our organizations. And with reduced resources and less expertise within the organization, we become more and more dependent upon working with our supplier partners in order to come up with new ideas to help us improve. And procurement should be the lead point of that, soliciting, soliciting ideas from the, uh, the vendor partners and trying to implement those within the organization. So. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about how we apply business process improvement in uh, procurement. The complexity of the procurement process is often misunderstood or incomplete. Without that understanding of the process, the ability to identify the correct metrics and the areas which are impacting that performance is virtually impossible. It's too easy to focus on the seemingly obvious issues and miss the real problem. You focus on perhaps the defects and vendor quality, and you miss the fact that the real issue is that the original specifications or testing was inadequate. You focus on delivery time, and we fail to focus on the fact that our forecasting of quantities is really out of whack with what we needed at the end of the day. By applying uh, business process tool of process mapping, sometimes also called value stream mapping, your organization can assure that we have a full understanding of how the procurement process works or doesn't work, as may be the case. Over time, any process, including procurement, 
often add steps which are a reaction to some problem or some issue that arose without really evaluating how it impacts the whole effort. So mapping discovers workarounds for issues that have come up over the years but never really been uh, fully addressed. When we do a mapping process, which may take anywhere from a couple of hours to possibly a couple days, depending upon the complexity of the effort, we start out with a very um, simple approach, but it can get very messy. Along the left side, and this is an example of what we would typically start to do on a whiteboard or by putting uh, post-it notes up on a, uh, on a wall and working with a cross-functional team of all the stakeholders in the organization. So along the left side of this sketch is some of the stakeholders. You've got customers, you've got production, purchasing, materials management, legal and finance as some of those. Across the top, we would again be working with the 10 major task groups that were part of the definition and then drilling down on those. So we would have purchase planning, standards and specifications, supplier research and selection, value analysis, and so on and so on. The idea here is that you start to get the picture that procurement involves a lot of cross-functional effort, and each task has more um, input and output requirements than perhaps we originally thought. So by doing this, what we do, and the next slide I'm just going to show quickly, is a representation of what we might end up with at the end. And this shows that a process can be very complex with a lot of interactions. And this highly detailed map gives us a baseline for moving forward. What comes out of the process mapping is the next major step in applying business process improvement methodologies. And that's the identification of gaps or overlaps during your process. So by identifying gaps and overlaps, which we call barriers, um, we start to have a target list of things that we can work on in order to approve, improve the process. The metrics and knowing the score that we talked about in the beginning sets the goals for the procurement performance improvement process. The process mapping gives a definition of where we are today, what's the current state. And then by applying the uh, barrier identification and, re and removal process, we start to make improvement. By measuring three elements which are shown here, we rank the barriers. We talk about what is the impact of a specific thing to the performance. Is it a high impact? Is it a modern, moderate impact? Or is it low impact? Then we look at how difficult is it going to be to change that barrier or to eliminate it. The third element that we look at is how long will an improvement effort focused around a specific barrier take. And by looking at three, these three elements with, again, still the same cross-functional team that put together the process map, we start to be able to rank these and to choose which ones will have the most benefit to the organization as we go forward. So this is just a picture of two of the tools that we use in the process, the first being a list of what are the barriers that we've identified. And you can see in that, the across the top of that is also the impact measurement, removal difficulty, uh, and time to remove. And all of these are done on a scale of 1 to 10. So then the, the grid in the front actually shows you how we would then plot the different barriers. And clearly, um, the ones that are take, have high impact but have a low removal difficulty are the ones that are good elements to, um, 
to go forward um, and, and immediately address for process improvement impact in, in a very short order. The one point that I want to reinforce here that we we really stick to and we work very um, hard with our clients on is not trying to do too much. When you do this barrier ranking and you do the brainstorming around putting this together, what you find out is you've got a very long list of items. You need to figure out how you can not overtax already stretched resources by identifying three or four removal activities to this prioritization process. The other thing that I would say is if you've got a big um, effort that you've identified, our experience is you really need to break that down into smaller programs. Uh, by choosing tasks this way, what you end up with is some very quick results that start to impact what can be done and really helps the organization to, um, to, uh, to move towards change with less resistance. Now I'm going to move into more the area of documentation and um, talk a little bit about the procurement documentation. It's estimated that about 80% of business information in companies today is unstructured. And of that, only 20% is managed. Yet it's hard to really think about any business where content doesn't play an essential role. The result of this uh, lack of management and structure is that organizations lose time and miss out on opportunities to become more productive. Even worse is the fact that an organization can actually have an exposure from information that it may either be retaining or losing along the way um, down the road, either a legal exposure or some other uh, reporting exposure. So the key here is that documents are the vehicle for, for the process. They become the roadmap and the direction that you uh, provide to the staff in executing the process. Some, as you move into document management, I want to review what is behind how the documents are developed and used. What's the workflow of the document life cycle? So some of the key questions we ask is, who initiates the document? Is it one person, one department within the company, or are many people and many different departments involved in issuing a document? Does the document stay within the originating department? And is it always the same person that initiates the document? Secondly. Uh, the same questions kind of go through on who receives the document. Are there many receivers? Are they in the same organization as the uh, document issuer? Does the document go outside of the company? And if so, you know, what effort is done to make sure that the document is understood by people who may not be within your corporate culture? Uh, next. You know, when is the document uh, completed? How often is it updated? The key here is that along any process, if a document is not complete or not available, it's going to lead to downtime and lag time in the process. So uh, understanding not only when it's done, but when should it be done is a key part of looking at the document and document management. Next question relative to document storage. Where is it stored or kept? Is it electronic? Is it physical? Do all of the users have access to the document when they need it? Uh, in one organization that we worked with, customer service and production didn't actually have the um, information from procurement on what was the delivery schedule for their uh, customers 
requirements or for production requirements. This led to a whole lot of running around, a lot of extra phone calls, people creating additional schedules and lists, uh, all because the information wasn't easily accessible. Finally, I want to talk just a minute about the, the document control process. Um, here the question is, how many documents are in your organization that nobody uses anymore, that aren't updated, that really are no longer relevant because the process has changed, but the documentation never changed? And so lack of change control, lack of um, looking at document obsolescence is a source of error and lost time to the organization as you go forward. Now, the biggest question around document management often is um, the question of how or the group of questions and really what the how question gets to is the essence of managing procurement documents or any document. And that is, how does a document relate to other areas? Is the information copied from it or to it? Is the information from this doc, from a document, um, keyed into the computer system? Is the information sequence correct? Is the language and use of the terms um, co uh, simple? Is it easily understood by everybody? And how does the uh, user actually understand what's there? Second question, how is the document completed? Is it completed by hand? Is it completed by uh, a machine? Does the computer fill the document? Is the document preloaded from a database that exists? And does it work with barcodes or other scanning techniques? to be able to allow information to be loaded downstream. How is the document distributed? Is there specific routing? Are there approvals that are required? And if so, how are these approvals collected? How are they documented subsequently to the initial uh, distribution? Do people make copies of the document? And do recipients use the copies they already get? I think this, that last point is a key one from my perspective. We are in the information age, and there's a huge amount of documentation that's generated that I think and distributed across the organization that many people have no need for and really actually only serves to clutter their inboxes or their, um, their work space. So, uh, I've always tried when I've had large organizations to encourage people not to copy me on stuff that I didn't really need to know or that you weren't expecting me to either review or add some kind of value to because otherwise it just meant that my ability to react to a document uh, that was important was diminished. Lastly, how's the document uh, maintained or filed? Uh, going forward, is it filed in a paper um, methodology or electronic? Is it searchable? And are there rules that apply to your documents in your organization regarding document retention, document uh, destruction, et cetera? Um, the, the quote at the end here, I really kind of liked. I felt that it kind of sum summed up everything in that, you know, the most expensive document is one that isn't where it's needed at the time it's needed. And the result becomes a lot of workaround, a lot of expediting, extra efforts, and quite frankly, a lack of uh, a collaborative environment in an organization. So now we've kind of gone through the process. We've talked a little bit about process mapping and BPI. We've talked about document management. What I'd like to propose to you is that really by combining business process improvement methodologies and understanding the process and looking in depth at your uh, documents that really provide that communication effort, what you really do is you have a very, very powerful understanding of what the process is for procurement and what the infra and how the information is 
managed. So um, I think one thing that we, we seldom reflect on is that just creating a document has got one cost. But the reality of it is, is that processing any document typically costs 20 times what it cost to originally create. And by processing, I mean the administration, the filing, transportation, storage, uh, inventorying the documents, and managing the document obsolescence. So the first thing that we analyze in looking at the documents used in the organization is what documents do you have now, who uses them, and how, which documents are the key ones, and what do they cost to produce? Um, secondly, we look at the documents as they exist and try and look at consolidating and restructuring the information, looking at a uh, redesign layout or template. Being able to allow a common format, format or template will allow people using the documents to understand the message and not struggle with the format where there's critical information. So by focusing on both, we get first pass yield improvement and cycle time improvement, which really drive the performance of the organization. In our, our work, we really focus on these more than anything else. So by understanding the process and the documents, what we're able to do then is to actually start to consider the tools that we might use. Now, when we look at optimizing a, uh, a process, we really start with the existing resources. And first, we try to get substantial improvements from the existing resources. By doing that, we free up resources to actually work on additional uh, improvements, and we free up resources to consider um, what kind of tools and what um, technologies are out there that may allow us to further optimize our process. One of those tools is electronic procurement. Now, electronic procurement definitely is not something new. It's been around since the 90s. And when it was implemented, everybody started to jump on the bandwagon. And as this slide indicates, uh, over 68% of public companies have implemented some kind of a uh, e-procurement solution. The problem becomes that the e-procurement solution, while it is very useful in reducing the procurement effort, particularly for items which are more of a commodity in nature, and it utilizes that electronic process to automate much of document management within the purchasing system. However, the issue becomes that we still aren't meeting uh, the actual use, as we can see from the next couple of statistics, where the amount of spend that's actually under management in the procurement is pretty small, and the amount of outside or maverick spending those workarounds, again, is actually pretty high. What's, what's keeping us from doing more with e-procurement? And the bottom line is that it's the user interface that really has not come up to speed and is uh, difficult, particularly for anybody who's not a regular user. The non-procurement user of e-procurement um, really has a repeat learning curve every time they go to use the tool which then tends to make them uh, move away from that tool. The next enabler, and my effort here is just to give you some ideas of some of the things that can have an impact, certainly not to give you a complete list of how to automate the procurement process or enable it. Um, Another technology that can assist in managing the documentation in procurement process is information capture or document imaging. Uh, the streamlining that um, 
the workflow and increasing productivity that result from performing document imaging at the front end of a business process uh, allows many benefits down the line. And it also can provide a connection between the paper world and the electronic world that improves productivity and enables continuous process improvement. The top benefits of scanning are making the information more accessible, searchable, and improving the connectivity to other systems such as ERP and document uh, content management systems. One of the things that we preach at R3D2 is reflected in the bottom here, and that's automating bad process will only result in generating poor results faster. So the whole idea here is understanding what your baseline is, understanding where the barriers are, and then looking at your documents and improving the documents themselves. And then you can move towards perhaps a capture or another automation tool. The final kind of enabler I was just going to throw up here quickly, and one that um, is probably the most obvious, is the use of other enterprise uh, ERP systems and MIS systems, tools such as SharePoint clearly allow a much uh, facilitated method of sharing documents and distrib distributing them across the cross-functional organization, making sure you've got consistency in the documents and the processes going forward. Electronic content management software uh, allows the transactions to be filed and categorized according to critical business needs. Um, it also allows organizations to implement and manage superior document controls based on business rules. So that's a, a key element. Finally, most all of our ERP systems today provide a structured consolidation and access to business information. They have many of the attributes that BPI and document management need to optimize the procurement process. However, as a part of a large system, the procurement component may not be optimized. So my message here is do not be afraid to look at bolt-ons to your ERP system, which can help to facilitate the user interface and simplify the procurement process. Um, have SAP is a very, very strong ERP tool. But as it comes to the procurement side, um, their user interface is pretty weak. The, uh, and what we'll see on the next slide is the fact that one of the, the bolt-ons that's available um, for SAP is a system called SBX. And by comparing what the steps are in a uh, procurement process in an ER, in a SAP SRM 5.0, there's 15 steps in that process. If you implement the SAP bolt-on, SBX, um, it combines the um, efforts that, that go through um, the process. So in this case, using more of an e-procurement type approach, um, really more of a uh, consumer type approach, they combine steps by selecting and pre-approving the vendors, determining the delivery that's acceptable, and assigning the vendor and, check and, and then checking out. This, however, does assume, seems really simple, but it does assume that you understand the process up front and that you've done the homework to be able to pre-select the vendors. You've done the homework to pre-create the um, shopping cart environment. But you can see that if you're repeating any kind of procurement function frequently, the benefits of doing that homework up front in terms of daily effort is huge. One other example that I have that I wanted to go through quickly was, and this is looking at just an invoicing process um, from a document uh, imaging perspective. And it shows that uh, if the invoices are scanned before they're processed, 
the document imaging platform then interfaces with the ERP system and the document management system, which allows whoever is doing the, the processing to simultaneously kick off the invoice workflow, file the invoice, and associate the document to the transaction that's in the ERP system. Further, by automating the meta metadata retrieval and performing that step during a scanning process, manual steps were removed, which included opening the invoice at a PC, opening the ERP application record, validating the information between the applications, and then saving the document to the different systems in the process. Again, just an example of what a tool might bring to you. So as I begin to wrap up here, I want to focus for a moment on what are some of the uh, benefits for applying BPI and document management to uh, procurement. The focus on process takes away the personal fear and creates a better understanding of how one fun what one function does impacts the other functions. It allows issues to be, it does not allow issues to be pushed from one functional area to another. So it helps to break down those critical silos keeping us from optimizing performance. By understanding the workflow and who is responsible for, for not only the tasks, but also inputs and outputs to a task, it can eliminate bottlenecks holding back process improvement. By focusing on information needs and timing of each group, um, document accuracy is improved and wasted effort in gaining clarification or correcting bad actions due to missing or incomplete information is eliminated or minimized. And finally, by following disciplined approach and defining the current state process, prioritizing the barrier removal and the organization, um, then has required data to develop a scorecard and an action plan for performance improvement. It also then gives you the basics that you can use in going forward and managing driver results. Final conclusions on my part are that Streamlining the process flow and eliminating tasks which do not add value frees up existing resources to do more work that contributes to the organization goals. The improved process, as we saw in the two examples, reduces the complexity by combining, refining, or re-engineering, and thus the documentation gets combined, refined, or redone. And finally, as I indicated early, in the stage of this presentation. If you improve first pass yield and reduce cycle times, you will improve the performance and have a unique competitive advantage. So at this point in time, I think uh, we're ready to turn it over to questions. Uh, there haven't been any questions that I've seen during the presentation. We've gone through pretty quickly an awful lot of information here. and. Uh, we will be, I will be available. You can either email me or contact me uh, through MS Dynamics World to answer specific questions that you may have as you reflect on it. If you're interested in getting a copy of these slides or having a discussion about what we talked about today, um, next week, next month, whatever, um, we will be available. My contact information is listed here. Um, so do we have any um, questions at all from any of the folks in the audience? Well, Richard, let me just jump in here and, and say thanks so much for uh, providing all this uh, great insight on procurement and document management and BPI. I, I think this is a really valuable uh, uh, session for everyone who is here. And like Richard said, you can enter your questions in the Q&A block that you'll see on the right side of the screen. Uh, Richard, we do have a couple of questions here. Um, the first one is, uh, how can procurement gain a more influential role in an organization? Okay, that, that's a great question, Jason. And I think the, 
the role of procurement contemporarily has really changed, and procurement professionals professionals are getting opportunities to collaborate uh, through their organizations and through supply networks. And the reason they're they're able to do that is because they are spending more time and they're leveraging technology and the information to look at areas such as spend analysis, look at strategic sourcing, getting more involved in contract management with other members of the organization. And they're uh, also spending more time on supplier management and financial savings management as these more administrative tasks of running the procurement uh, function have been in many ways simplified or are available to be automated. All right, great. Um, one other question that's in so far, how can we start the procurement improvement process? From our perspective, the best way to start the procurement improvement process is to begin by really trying to take an inventory of the various steps within the process, take an inventory of who's involved in the process, how involved they are, and uh, where some of the, uh, again, the gaps and overlaps are. And the way we do that is by utilizing the uh, process mapping tool very early on uh, to help us create that inventory of steps, uh, inventory of what functions are involved, et cetera. So you need to establish a baseline of where you are today so that you've got uh, a clear understanding of how to move forward. OK, great. And uh, just one last call for questions here. Uh, otherwise, we will uh, begin wrapping up. And I'll remind you, we are recording the session. So um, if you want to view it or pass it along to a colleague, um, it will be available uh, online on mstandamishworld.com in the next few days. And we'll send an update on that as well when it's, when it's available. So I don't see any other questions in the queue right now. I guess we'll uh, close things out. Richard, uh, thanks so much for your time today. Thank you very much, and, and I want to thank the folks at uh, MS Dynamics World, and particularly Jason, for helping to get all this set up. So. All right. Well, thank you, and uh, thanks, everyone, for attending. Have a great day, and uh, we look forward to seeing you at another Document Management webcast soon. Thanks, and have a great day. Bye.